I live in the classroom, sir. I, I like for teachers to know that I'm your teammate. Uh, I had some strong A students. I had some strong C students. I was proud of both of them, right? Yep. And so we got a wall out there called our NFL wall, no, no failure list. And any kid that has passed all their classes, we put their name on the wall so they can see their name. And then we have an NBA wall, which has never been absent. It's so like any kid who doesn't miss school during the nine weeks, we put their name on a basketball and put it on the wall. And those kids love seeing their name and just oh, recognize yeah. Finding ways to recognize kids. I love, I love that. I love that. Since I've been here and some of the things that we've been doing, it's an influx of people coming and wanting to be here and bringing the kids. I got about, I got about 50 kids on a waiver to come out of zone. They're just parents want them to be here. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Tell me about your data uh, and tell me how you track that. What's, what do you look for? What's, um, what's important to you? So in the first PLC of the year, I taught it <clears throat> and I went in, I got, I got the nurse to go and get me an operation uniform. So I went in full gloves, hand suit. I walked in the teachers looking like, what are you doing? <laughs> <clears throat> and I told them the idea behind what I'm doing is this. I don't want data to just be a bunch of numbers that we're looking at but not using it effectively. We're gonna use data the way a doctor use a scalpel when he's doing surgery. We're gonna use the data to diagnose the need and operate on these kids, right? Operate on their learning style, operate on their learning ability, operate on their engagement, operate on their differentiation so that they can get everything they need. We looked at pre-COVID data. And one mm -hmm. of the things that we noticed were students' literacy rate and their performance was at a certain level elementary, it would drop about 12 to 15 percentage points middle school, go back up to that what it was elementary and high school. And the only thing that they were doing different was the amount of time they were in class. They get um, roughly 100 minutes in math and ELA in elementary and 90 minutes in high school. So I said, well, what if we could build off of where they are and instead of dipping because they're losing time, give them the same time to continue to grow. And so we did a lot of research, talked to the teachers, got their perception. They, so every day we do math and ELA 90 minutes every single day. We take our common assessment data, we do cross-classroom comparisons, we look at the standards and how kids are, are doing in each standard. Was it a standard that your kids may have done well in it, my kids did, and what did you do so we could diagnose it and we can go and prescribe it in my class? All right. Um, how about your staff? They develop the family feel, and we just rolling. That's great. You uh, are you having any trouble finding certified? So, I, so you know, it's always tough to find people, uh, especially in small towns like this. Right. But last year, you know, I did some I did some crazy recruitment last year. Like I took it upon <laughs> myself to do some recruiting. Right. I got a teacher here from the Philippines. One of the teachers on this hall came from Ohio State. The classroom we just well, we won't hold that again. We won't hold that again. So you know, I got away. Quick, she could, didn't she? I got away in Georgia shirts. You know, she she doesn't convert it. You gonna um, go all right? I got a um, teacher. The teacher with the classroom we just came. She came from Texas. So, so, okay. so we, we talk to folks all over the place. Okay. Like I'm calling colleges, like you gotta go to educators and go to them. So I take that upon myself to do that. Yeah. Dad, let me know if you need anything else, all right?